First of all, I'd like to take this time to thank the elders for giving me the opportunity to speak uh, and that they're, they're trusting me in regards to giving a lesson for the night. And, and I pray hopefully this lesson will be uh, educational, informative, and uh, encouraging to others. Uh, the title of my lesson today is Dealing with Scammers. Um, for those of you who might have my Facebook post last week, uh, I have put up a public post exposing a confirmed scammer on my page for all the Facebook to see. So for definition of purposes here, for definition of a scammer is a person who commits fraud or participates in a dishonest scheme. Scammers are individuals who are preying on people's good intentions or someone who makes money using illegal methods, especially by tricking people. Now, as I continue with the lesson today, I ask for you all to take, uh, take your time, open your Bibles, uh, start off at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 24 through 27. And that's Ephesians chapter 4, verses 24 through 27. And I'll hold your thoughts there as, at, at that passage. Also, if you got a pen and paper, please feel free to have that, because I will also go through other scriptures as well. The past few weeks, many of you know that I was in the process of moving some items. Um, and I had come across some items that were in my storage, and a friend gave me the wonderful idea of possibly selling some of those items to help some put some money back in my pocket. It was a great idea, and I had an item from one of my old businesses that I uh, that I could sell. Thus, I placed it on one of the popular item selling locations that, if you're familiar with it, be Facebook Market. As the week progressed, I received a message online stating that this particular person was interested in purchasing that item that I had listed for sale. Now, granted, this made me, of course, because again, this would help put funds in the account so that I can address some financial items that I wanted to take care of. Uh, and I was thinking this particular interaction was truly a blessing from God, or so it seemed. So, as I continue, I want to list a few things to be aware of from scammers. First of all, they always come out at the most appropriate time when you have a goal, get something completed. Now understand, a good scammer will always come and approach you when you're trying to do a positive and honest work that can benefit you and possibly others around you. They will seize on the open opportunity to benefit for themselves. Secondly, they look like the real deal until you get into the specifics. Two things that this particular scammer did. One, the scammer was trying to build a good rapport with me on Facebook Messenger. Which building rapport with someone is not a bad thing. But for those who are looking to do evil, it could be used as an effort to drop your guard or have the other person drop their guard so that they could take advantage of you. This person was good. They showed me images of themselves. The lady had a boot on her foot saying she was broken. We arranged some times and dates, locations, uh, mentioned that her daughter was going to pick it up. Full thing. Nothing to even think about. Secondly, as we were discussing the payment process of how to complete the transaction, this is where I would not uh, note that the specifics of how money transaction with Zelle worked. And I was glad I was knowledgeable of it because I could have been caught up in the scheme and could have lost more than I was looking to gain. I'll go briefly hear what the scammer was trying to do and how they played this out here. First of all, scammer wanted to pay for the item before the exchange date, which that was fine with me. I'm good with that. I'll take money. But then the scammer mentioned something about a business Zelle account. Okay, I'm familiar with Zelle, not quite sure with that. Then the scammer had email sent to me that looked like funds were already sent to my account even though the funds did not hit my bank account ledger. Now, my bank account ledger may be a little bit different than others, so I'm, you know, I'm special like that. Uh, mine's kind of color-coded. Mine's either black or it's red. So one, the amount that they mentioned did not show the right numbers. And secondly, currently because of the specific account, uh, the colors didn't change. So I knew something was quite wrong with this account. 
Then the scammer was stating that they had to send a minimum of $500 to the account. Mind you, the item's only $200. So, but the instructions were, they sent $500. They were looking for me to be a good, graceful, nice person. Uh, I'll send them $300 back, and then the $500 should show up on my account. I'll let you sit on that and think about how that process is supposed to work. Okay. So <laughs> I went, talked to the bank, making phone calls, just confirming some things because some that doesn't sound right. And then the next thing I know, communication with the scammer disappeared. Gone. Didn't wait. Third thing that scammers will do, and, and those who know me as I get older, uh, this is the most irritating thing of everything that I have that rub me the wrong way. Lastly, scammers will always waste your time. Now, having gone through all of this and uncovering the scheme, though I'm blessed to not fall for this, this transaction took about two hours out of my time addressing a situation that I thought would be a blessing that turned out to be a falsehood. So, after describing this previous situation, and, and you who know me, don't I don't like wasting time. Uh, and you ask what kind of state of mind that I was in at this transaction. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I can tell you I was I was not just angry. I, I was red hot, like my current bank ledger. But and because of that, so I now come to the passage that I mentioned to you before. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 24 through 27. Now, please note, this is personal development lesson for all of us to consider. I have personally have taught myself when I get to that upset stages, points during my life, because it happens you know, a lot during my life when I get upset on some things. Being a child of God, the question is, what should I do? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24 states the following. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And then it skips down to verse 26 and addresses anger, how to address it. As a Christian, be ye angry and sin not. Let the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Again, anger is a natural feeling to have as a human. Nothing wrong with that. But it's your actions afterwards that will reflect what level of growth you are as a person and as a Christian. Let's go through these three things that he mentioned. One, the Lord says, sin not. No matter what happens, make sure your actions do not become an act of sin. Granted, this other person was not in front of me, so I didn't have my bat. I'm going to physically hit him. Couldn't. So that sin was avoided. But the one thing I will say is this here uh, to think about. And I always think about the, the action that Moses did in Numbers chapter 20, verses 6 through 11, when he was angry at the Israelites and the cause of what that sin caused to him. Another thing I want to remember is a lesson that Mr. Eric Paluka had taught uh, last year. It was in regards to the words that come out of our mouth, the things that we say, the words that we shouldn't say. In anger, someone could possibly say some words that they shouldn't say. But as Christians, we should be more disciplined. Second one, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Do not hold a grudge. Do not let the act of the other party consume your time negatively. I've already wasted two hours dealing with this scammer. Letting my anger continue with this person would only waste more time and turn to be non-productive. As a common song that we tend to love or hate, if you like Frozen, as Christians, let it go. Thirdly, neither give place or foothold to the devil. Do not give the devil any opportunity to influence our lives due to what the other person's actions are. Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 48, discusses Jesus' concept on an eye for an eye. 
Now, I will let you read that passage on your own. It's a great passage to learn and study. Now, note, there is nothing wrong when in regards to self-defense and protecting yourself. I always encourage self-defense. But there is a difference with self-defense and justice and the difference of revenge. The latter, revenge, is given place to the devil. Let us remember that. Romans 12, verses 19 through 20 is a good passage to read. Now, the lesson I learned from this situation is this. Whether positive or negative, the circumstance. Life is always a test. And we should always be on guard and try to be as disciplined as we can in all our actions. Now, but the other aspect of this lesson that I'm presenting to you this afternoon is this. And young people, please listen to this real clearly. Oh, young people from ages of 2 to 92. This is not the only type of fraud that we will ever face in our lives. There are scammers that we'll have to address in time for business dealings similar to this one. There will be scammers in our dealings with those in our emotional and personal affairs whether in friendships or even personal relationships. The most costly scammers that we will ever deal with in our lives are those that are false teachers from either other religions, Islam, Hindu, Buddhism, etc., or false teachers, the gospel. Now, due to time constraints, uh, there's a long lesson to go with this, but I will go through the rest of this lesson fairly quickly, so please have your pens and paper ready. If you want to write down the following scriptures to read at your leisure. Now, there's three biblical lessons that we all can learn from scam, particularly at this point, false teachers. One, be aware of these scammers or false teachers that approach you. I reference you to these passages for your own. Second Peter chapter two. There is one in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20, and 1 John 4, 1 through 6. I'll repeat those again. 2 Peter chapter 2, Matthew 7, verses 15 through 20, and 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Now, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 states, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravaging wolves. 1 John 4, 1 says, Love it, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are God or of God. Excuse me. Let me read that again. Be beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Secondly, be knowledgeable about what these scammers or false teachers will say. You know, when you take the time to study our Bible, or when we take the time to study our Bible, we will know what the truth is. When they're speaking the same things, you can tell what they say that they are scammers or false teachers. I refer to you to passages of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Acts chapter 20, verses 20 through 30, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 through 18. And the last one tonight, 1 John, chapter 4, verses 5 through 6, which reads, They are the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Thirdly, call them out when you see them scamming you or teaching false doctrine. Just as I posed on Facebook about the scammer that tried to scam me. Now, when I stated it was not out of revenge, well, you might read the post, you might feel the anger tone that I had, but it wasn't out of revenge. But 
more as a warning to protect others from the same fate. I reference you to the to passage of 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 through 21, and Titus 1, 9 through 16. And in Titus, I read chapters uh, 1, 9 through 13, and it reads, holding fast the faithful word. Let me start again. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able to be sound, that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsay. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they uncircumcised, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the, the, creation, the creations are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. I make this last statement, these last statements, and the lesson is yours for the evening. You know, many individuals have come up to me personally and asked, James, why are you member? Why are you a Christian? Why are you go to that Church of Christ? There's multiple reasons that I've given over the years to my individuals, my colleagues, my friends, family members, and even those who are very close to me. The one main reason that I the one main reason that I am a member of the one church is this. I will refuse to be scammed. Now, you've kind of seen a little bit of the anger. I've kind of calmed it down a little bit about me losing a few hundred dollars. How do you think I feel if I was to lose my entire soul from a scam? If what others are doing is not according to what I read for myself in the Bible, they are not who I will follow and listen to. I had to do a couple of things when I made that decision. One, I make a decision to which direction to go and then the correct way to accomplish it. In which direction to go, I refer to the following scripture. Scripture to learn, Joshua 24, verses 14 through 15. Again, it's Joshua 24, 14 through 15. And it says, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites or if I can ask, say, gods of Islam, gods of Hindu, the gods of false doctrine, gospel doctrine, whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the correct way to accomplish this method is this. I refer to chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that this is that good and acceptable and perfect or complete will of God. You know, as I had that uh, bank ledger I mentioned earlier about the red, you know, we all have a spiritual ledger. We all have to count for as well. One that is red as well, red of sin. No, we're not born with this ledger. But the ledger of sin here is because of the actions that we made and the choices in we made in our lives on this earth. There are so many scammers or false teachers that are out there that will say, follow me and my belief and doctrine. And I'll, I'll clear that, help you with that ledger. But it's not from the one true God. But again, I made the decision to follow the one true God and that true God said in Isaiah 1 and 18, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, as red, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool or white as wool. 
I hope everyone listening to this message tonight has also made that same decision as well. Well, the lesson is yours. Let us continue to be good stewards in God's kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we will be able to control our anger as Christians and not be scared by scammers or false teachers of this world. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time.